Ukrainci. Ukrainci. Ukrainians, our defenders. Today, one of the representatives of the Russian state said that the occupiers allegedly began to use laser weapon systems in Ukraine, allegedly to save missiles. Firstly, it is noteworthy that they need to save missiles to somehow explain it. That is, more than 2,000 missiles fired by the Russian army at Ukraine were the main part of their stockpile of missiles. That is, only the remnants are left. Secondly, everyone has already seen Russia at war. Inexperienced conscripts, which it throws into battle like cannon fodder, marauders, who see normal appliances for the first time in a foreign country, old Soviet armor without modern protection, forbidden phosphorus bombs, which they used to burn schools and ordinary houses, and missiles, most of which were spent by the Russian army on the destruction of absolutely civilian infrastructure without any strategic military outcome. Today they hit missiles in such a way at Mykolaiv and Dnipro. Well, in the propaganda of Nazi Germany there was such a term – Wunderwaffe – wonder weapon. The clearer it became that they had no chance in the war, the more propaganda there was about the wonder weapon, which would be so powerful that it would provide a turning point in the war. And here we see that in the third months of a full-scale war, Russia is trying to find its Wunderwaffe, allegedly laser. All this clearly indicates the complete failure of the invasion. But again, this also shows that they are afraid to admit that catastrophic mistakes have been made at the highest state and military levels in Russia. Therefore, they will come up with more and more Wunderwaffe as the armed forces of Ukraine and all our defenders liberate our land step by step. How long will it take? The answer to this question can only be given by the real situation on the battlefield. We are trying to do it as soon as possible, that's for sure. We are obliged to drive the occupiers and guarantee Ukraine real security. This is why I signed decrees on the extension of the legal regime of martial law and the term of general mobilization. I hope that the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine will support this decision in the near future. Our army and all those who defend the state must have all legal tools to act steadily. Kherson, Melitopol, Berdyansk, Energodar, Mariupol and all of our cities and communities that are under occupation, under temporary occupation, should know that Ukraine will return. I said today in my address on the occasion of the Day of Remembrance of victims of the deportation of the Crimea Tatar people that our state does not leave anyone behind and returns what belongs to Ukraine by right. We remember Crimea and we will never forget 1944, the genocide of Crimean Tatars committed by the Soviet authorities, and 2014, the second wave of destruction of everything free on the Crimean Peninsula. Especially on this day I signed the law on the protection of persons deprived of liberty by the occupiers, as well as on the protection of family members of such people. We are talking about all the Kremlin prisoners, both in Crimea and in the occupied part of Donbass. The law gives them more protection and assistance from the state. We are also accumulating all possible resources of the world to support Ukraine. I am grateful to Andriy Shevchenko, our legendary football player, for becoming the first ambassador of the new national brand of Ukraine, United24. The state needs this platform right now, which allows in particular to raise funds to support Ukraine. Anyone in the world, in one click, can contribute to our victory and in the direction he or she considers most important, for example defense and demining, medical care or rebuilding the country. And in early June we will be able to see the first special event in London with the participation of Andriy Shevchenko in support of United24. I thanked President of the European Commission Ursula von der Leyen for the package of aid to our country announced today. Its amount is 9 billion euros and also for supporting the plans for restoration of Ukraine. This step by the European Commission is a testament to the true leadership that the European Union is capable of, and it will definitely help us in the struggle for our common freedom. I spoke with the new President of the United Arab Emirates, congratulated him on his election and invited to take part in the post-war reconstruction of our state. 
we discussed the threat to global food security that Russia had provoked by the invasion, and traditionally in the evening I signed the decree on awarding our heroes. 197 servicemen of the armed forces of Ukraine were awarded state awards, five of them posthumously. Also today I had the honor to present the Order of the Golden Star to servicemen who were previously awarded the title of Hero of Ukraine, in particular to Colonel Serhii Baranovsky for courage and efficiency in the battles in Donbass, and to Colonel Serhii Muzienko for personal courage and success in the battles in the Kharkiv region. Eternal glory to the defenders of Ukraine, eternal memory to everyone who gave life for our independence and freedom. Glory to Ukraine!